Anti-government protesters in Egypt will make another push today to remove President Hosni Mubarak from power. They're calling Friday a day of departure. There are plans to march on the presidential palace. Mubarak supporters, though, have entered the fray in recent days. They're also clashing with protesters. Now dozens of journalists say they're being attacked by pro-government supporters. U.S. officials quickly condemn those attacks. This is a violation of international norms that guarantee freedom of the press, and it is unacceptable under any circumstances. We also condemn, in the strongest terms, attacks on peaceful demonstrators, human rights activists, foreigners, and diplomats. Vice President Joe Biden phoned Egypt's vice president. He pushed for the immediate release of journalists who have been detained by the government. For more, Rob Mahoney joins us this morning. He's the deputy director of the Committee to Protect Journalists. Rob, good morning to you. Good morning. Have you ever seen anything like this before in, in your career, a, a journalist being attacked and beaten? Not on this scale. Journalists are always on the front line covering civil unrest, but the numbers of journalists who have been attacked and the way that they've been attacked in Cairo is unprecedented. Uh, what's the latest? What do you know this morning? Well, up to now, we've had something like 70 journalists in the last 24 hours that have, that have been uh, harassed, their materials have been taken, some of them have been beaten. It's very, very difficult to find out what's going on in terms of television because all the live shot cameras around Tahrir Square that we, can, that we know of have been taken down. So as of, the, as of now, everyone is waiting for Friday prayers and to see what happens then. You know, there's such a big question about who's to blame. Mm -hmm. And you look at the video and you look at these protests and it's hard to tell which side which person is on. Is it fair to blame pro-Mubarak, pro-government forces for these attacks? From everything we're being told by Egyptians and by the foreign journalists who are there, yes, the government is behind this. And, well, and what substantial proof do you have behind that? Many of the uh, pro-democracy uh, supporters in the uh, in the square have have uh, taken uh, as uh, as captive some of these uh, these people who have been attacking them, and on them they're carrying government ID, ID that shows that they're working for government agencies or security agencies. That's one set of proof, and also th when they've been marching, they themselves have turned on journalists filming them. So it's, it's pretty obvious to us. You know, the question at this point, though, is what do you do? If, if you're a journalist over there, there's a sense of lawlessness that's in the area right now. You can't call the police. You don't have any help. How do you protect yourself? Well, there's several ways of doing it. First of all, you band together and you work in teams so as the journalists help themselves. And then we need constant publicity, constant um, monitoring of, this, of, the, of the conditions there so that we can get uh, condemnations from uh, governments such as the U.S. government has done to protect journalists to put the Egyptian authorities on notice that if they do attack journalists, there's a price to pay politically for this. But for the most part, are journalists on their own in terms of protecting themselves? Of course, when you're down there uh, amongst all those demonstrations, you have to use your wits to get out of the way and stay safe. You know, it's a fine line sometimes when you're covering a story between knowing when you're safe and when the story is more important. Is this one of those stories where the story is more important than maybe a journalist's safety? You know, that's a decision that individual journalists and their editors have to take, but the nature of the job is that journalists take risk, that they're on the front line documenting history, and no matter what we say about taking care of yourself, journalists are driven to go and tell the story. It, it is a calling and a passion that, that, that uh, so many of us have, particularly journalists, and they want to be there, and they certainly want to do this, and they certainly know the dangers that they're facing with it. We, uh, we thank the journalists that are out there, wish them the best in their safety, and we thank you, Rob, for coming by this morning. Rob Mahoney with the Committee to Protect Journalists. Thank you, sir. Thank you.